If you have a hard time with bleach and lifting your client's hair without creating any damage, then keep watching because I'm going to show you how I gave my client a really nice icy blonde and made sure that we kept the integrity of her hair a number one priority. You can also follow me on Instagram at Christy at the cottage. Here's my clients before and just so you know, I was a little worried about how blonde she wanted to go and about having potentially damaged ends. And so I did do a few strand tests throughout her hair just to be safe and make sure that the integrity of her hair would be safe throughout the process and that we weren't going to run into any potential melting or damage or anything like that. You guys know how scary it can be when you're trying to go really, really blonde and you just sometimes never know what a client's hair has been through and especially if it's your first time with your client, like this is my first time with this client. So I feel like sometimes it's just nice to do a strand test to make sure that you know where you're going with the service. The results of our strand test were a little bit concerning, but I just thought about it for a few minutes and I decided to come up with a game plan for her hair and I mixed two bowls of bleach, one of them with 20 volume and one of them was basically bleach water with like just a tiny bit of developer that way it was extremely weak i didn't really have to worry about it lifting or pushing the hair at, at all so i felt confident that if it ended up sitting in the hair for a while i wouldn't really have to worry about it damaging the hair because it literally had no power to it so the actual bleach that i'm using on her hair right now is the weaker bleach just because I know that this is going to be sitting for quite a while and ar around the hairline is usually where it ends up being a little bit more fine. So I wanted to make sure that I use something that if it's going to be sitting for a while, I'm not going to have to worry about it. I also wanted to show you guys this new trick that I had recently seen and it's probably something that you guys have seen already if you follow Jamie Dana. Um, she foils the back part of the hairline backwards and she actually also foils like the mohawk section backwards, which I don't do that, but I wanted to try this out and see how I felt about it. And it actually is really nice to foil this way just in the back area because trying to get behind the ears sometimes can be really hard and trying to get them to bend their head and maneuver around the ears. So I highly recommend trying that out if you haven't. And if you had tried it out, then let me know how you guys feel about it because we're all learning and trying something new. And this was something that I recently had tried and I actually enjoyed it and felt comfortable foiling back in this area. So if you guys have tried this before too, then let me know. Another way that you can prevent damage from happening is starting your foils in the back area. That way, if this is processing for like an hour or two hours, if you're slow like I am or very meticulous, then sometimes it can take like three or four hours to foil a whole head just like this did for me. So if you start in the back area, then this will make it easier for you to be able to wash the foils out if you need to, if they finish processing. Imagine how hard it would be if you start at the top and then work your way down and then the foils are ready to be washed out. In the top area, you're gonna basically like run water through all the foils if you take them, take them to the shampoo bowls and foils are gonna slide down the back area and everything, which trust me i've done in my younger years of being a hairstylist so starting in the back has helped a lot because it just makes it so much nicer that when you want to go pull the foils out or rinse the foils out it's such an easier and cleaner process than having to do it from the top if your bottom is still processing by the way pay attention right now with the towel 
I'm taking this very thin piece of hair and I'm wiping the bleach off the ends where I knew that it would melt for sure if it sat on there for too long just because it's already so light. Please take the time to do this for your clients. Try not to dismiss these little pieces where you feel like it's not that big of a piece so it's not that big of a deal. Any little piece that's going to snap off your clients are potentially going to notice and you're going to notice when you wash their hair out and you see it fall out in the shampoo bowl or get stuck in the drain or come out in the foil or whatever. So take the time to make sure you're taking care of your client's hair by just taking these little towels that you can keep right next to you and just pull the, the bleach off of the hair if you end up running it down through the foils like right here I have those two little pieces just pulled out to the side to make sure that I don't run bleach through them and if I just so happen to accidentally run bleach through them and I don't want it to sit on there for too long then just wipe it off and it will dry out and stop processing. And don't feel bad about taking the time to do these steps. I know that I can be really slow when I do my foil work or honestly any of my bleach work. It's just because I'm so meticulous and want to make sure that I'm taking very good care of my client's hair. And I have been told over time from multiple people like you work way too slow. Your clients aren't going to want to sit there for six hours, four hours, however long it is to get their hair done when they can go somewhere else to get their hair done for less time and probably less money and they probably won't notice the difference in the service. So don't feel bad if it takes you five or six hours to do a full foil. My client right here that I'm actually doing, this is the first time that I'm doing her hair and she told me the reason that she chose me to do her hair, she's actually from like an hour away, is because she found me on Instagram. Um, my Instagram handle is Christy at the cottage. And the reason why she came to me is because she found me on Instagram and she was watching some of my videos and she saw how I really take the time to do my foils and that my foil work is really clean and nice and meticulous and like she literally used the word meticulous which is something that I've always described myself as when I do foiling and that I like to make sure that my foils are really clean whatever and so she actually told me that's why she chose me to do her hair because she liked how organized my foils look and how clean they look and to me, that really made me feel more confident in my work because for as many times as I've been told, like, you're too slow or you need to speed up or why are you taking so much time on your clients? They're not going to notice the difference. Like, this just reaffirms to me, like, I'm doing the right thing for myself and for my clients and that, yes, they do notice. And honestly, like, charge what you're worth if you feel like you're taking too long because you're doing all of these steps like I've kind of changed my pricing around before I would just kind of like oh I'm gonna add this this and this up I'm gonna add the partial foil up and then I'm gonna add up the partial balayage and all the different bowls of bleach that I use and all of this stuff or whatever but that just gets kind of difficult especially when I have a lot of clients reaching out to me now that are from like out of town or I've never done their hair before so right now it's just easier to break the price down and just say my my cost is $75 an hour for me to do your hair and I've never had anybody have a problem with that and it gives me the confidence to know that if I take a little bit longer because I'm trying to make sure that I'm taking care of their hair, like I don't need to feel bad about it because I don't need to feel like I need to be in a rush to get the service done when they already know my quality of work and I don't need to feel like, oh crap, I'm on a time crunch because I'm only going to be able to charge $200 for this foil or whatever. So I need to pack in some more clients. No, take your time charge per hour or whatever you're comfortable with just explain to your clients ahead of time and they'll see your work and they're, they'll know they'll understand why they're choosing you they're coming you over somebody else is because they appreciate the time and effort that you're putting in to making sure that their hair is done nicely without being damaged at the same time
Again, the bleach that I'm using on the hairline right here is probably like a five volume, if that. It's bleach that has been sitting at this point for over an hour and it's heavily watered down. So there's like hardly any power to it. I don't have to worry that it's going to be too damaging. Sure, if I let it sit there for like hours and hours and hours, like I would probably have to be concerned. But I don't have to worry because it's such a weak bleach that I can let it sit for a little bit with the confidence of knowing that by the time I'm able to check it, that the hair will still be in good condition. Also, I'm using my short scuff lightener because it has a bond enforcer built into the bleach. And then I'm also using Olaplex because I feel like I get double protection. Um... One thing that I have seen recently, and I don't know what the truth is to this, but I've seen actually that if you use Olaplex with Schwarzkopf Lightener, that it kind of like counteracts the bond enforcer or the Olaplex and it actually potentially is damaging, which is a really big shock to me to hear that if that is true, because I've always use my Olaplex with my lightener when it's my uh, Schwarzkopf lightener, Blonde Me, and I've never gotten any damage. And I've really pushed it a few times, but I do notice when I don't use my Olaplex that sometimes I feel like I'm like, oh crap, I kind of stress out and wish that I did have my Olaplex if I run out. So if you use Schwarzkopf and if you have any knowledge on that, like please leave a comment in the section below because I would really like to know like what is the truth behind that is that just kind of talk or is that valid so go ahead and let me know because I'm honestly really curious Okay, so I really hate wasting time and wasting space and doing teeny little triangle sections or whatever if I end up doing larger section and then it doesn't balance out on the other side. So then I get a little triangle section of a little piece of hair. And so I'm going through and I'm just taking my foil and I'm measuring because I want to be exact. I don't want to waste time with my foiling. So I'm going to start on this side, make sure that this whole section is going to fit and then I'm going to the other section and make sure that section fits with the foil. That way I'm not like wasting any time or doing little small sections that don't even mean anything other than I'm doing a whole bunch of small sections for no reason. So just go through and make sure that you're measuring your sections so that you can work more effectively. Okay, now that we're getting into the area where she has a little bit more blonde going through the ends, where down towards the nape of her neck, she didn't really have any blonde through the ends of her hair. So I'm going through her new growth with my 20 volume Schwarzkopf. And then I'm going to place the foil right where her new growth is. And then I took my watered down bleach and just ran it through the very ends. And I'm going to place a second foil directly under that. That way I can fold that up separately. And then when the time comes while I'm checking her hair, if I need to pull those 
foils out, I can just slide them out without having about having to worry about interrupting the process of her roots. So I just thought that would be a lot easier that I can check her hair and make sure that it processes evenly and stop the process through the ends if I need to. By the way, I think I've mentioned this before, but if you haven't used a board for just basic foil work, I highly recommend it. I don't know about you, but the longer that I do hair, which is probably about uh, 17, 18 years now, roughly, um, my hand starts cramping really bad just because it's like you're trying to hold the foil in place and whatnot. So try using a foil board to do your work and I feel like it's a lot cleaner. I feel like I don't have to worry about saturation as much and then my hand definitely feels a lot better by the end of the day just because I'm not having to use it or like scrunch it up and try to hold the foil as tight as I normally would. So I definitely recommend getting a board if you haven't tried it. By the way, the foil pattern that I'm doing for her hair is an extremely fine weave where I'm basically just doing teeny little slivers of hair that I'm weaving out and then I'm doing my next section a slice and I'm not doing any subsections in between. So if your clients are not ready for like a bleaching tone and they want to have a little bit of dimension with their blonde even if they want it to be platinum blonde but they just want a super tiny amount of dimension i recommend doing this service because if you do a full bleach and tone then they might be a little bit too uneasy about how solid it looks so doing your service this way is really nice because it gives the clients that little bit of dimension that they're wanting but also allowing them to feel super bright at the same time By the way, if you're still watching the video and you haven't fast forwarded at all, if you really just enjoy a long video of foiling drawn out for a hundred hours and you don't get bored by it, then thank the Lord for you because at this point I'm like, you know what? This is for all of you guys that leave comments saying that you like watching the whole process and you like the longer videos. I am having a really hard time not cutting out like a whole bunch of this because I feel like 
I'm going to lose my views because nobody wants to sit here and watch me foil because I'm thinking to myself like, bitch, I still got the whole top section and the back and we're not even halfway done. So if you're still watching, then congratulations and you're definitely like one of my favorites. And in case you thought that we were done at this point, because now I'm working on my last few foils on the top, uh, jokes on you, we're finishing up the top section, but now we're going to go remove some foils and make sure that we're not creating any damage. But then guess what? We still have the back section to do. So hope you have fun and get your popcorn or margarita, whatever sounds good for you. But we're going to finish this top section and then do some foil checking in the back. Okay, so here's the section in the back that's been sitting here for quite a while now. And I used to spray down my foils with water trying to cancel out the bleach. But I just realized that the more that the strand is wet, the more it's going to keep processing or it's going to hit like the natural hair and then it's going to adjust the natural hair color. So now I just like towel out my bleach and then try to like rub it out as much as I can and that way it will dry out and that will make it stop processing. Also to be honest when I was going through and pull testing her hair her ends actually felt pretty fine so I really didn't have to pull out the foils quite yet at all. I wanted to show you guys what I mean when I say I water down my bleach. I just spray it a little bit and add my Olaplex and mix it together. And hi, now we're going to go ahead and foil through the back section, which is the last section that we're going to be doing. And just so you know, at this point, I believe we had been foiling for probably like three and a half hours, which to be honest is really honestly kind of good timing for myself. So I was actually really shocked that I wasn't like at hour five doing her hair. So now we're going to go through and pull out the other section that is already done and ready to pull out that way we don't cause any damage and you can see that it's a nice even tone all the way through the ends so having that weaker bleach really helped with making sure that it lifted evenly but not over processing and damaging the hair Another thing to prevent damage from happening is don't set your client under any heat. A steamer might be okay, but even that I'm not really fond of. Normally the foils underneath are already processing really nicely. You just got to hit the top foils a little bit just to get them to speed up. So I don't like using a heater because I feel like I'm not in control of the heat. It usually just hits the top of the head and that's about it. So just go through and hit your foils with a blow dryer like every few minutes and check on them and that should be enough heat to speed the process up. As always, to pre-tone my clients, I'm using Finola No Yellow Shampoo. Okay, so my client has been processing for about four or five hours or so. And right now we're going to tone her blonde. We were able to get her pretty, blight, pretty bright, even though she's naturally pretty dark. So, and she doesn't have any damage in her hair. Um, 
Right now she's sitting at the shampoo bowl with Olaplex, so that's gonna sit for about 10 minutes or so. She likes to be really bright, but she doesn't really want to be like su super ashy. She doesn't want to grab too like cool or anything where uh, the blonde can overtone. So right now she said she kind of likes that little beige, um, but her hair is so dark naturally that I know she's gonna have a lot of warm undertones kind of sneak back through. So we're gonna tone her hair to be like cooler, but not, not, not like too ashy. I don't want to actually grab gray or anything, um, but a little bit brighter. So we're just gonna see what I have, and then we'll tone her probably with like a 10V and a little bit of a pearl ash, just to keep it nice and cool, but not like too ashy. This is what I use for her hair equal parts and then just a teeny little drop of the rose gold. For toning her hair, I pulled away the hairline pieces for like the first few minutes. And then once the rest of her hair was toning, I ended up running it through her hairline just because I didn't want it to overtone. So there's a little tip. If you're toning her hair, make sure you pull like the money piece and right around her temples out because that will definitely grab really ashy because it's extra porous. Here's her hair at the very end. You can see from styling it that she doesn't have any breakage. Her hair still feels nice and thick and healthy. There's not a whole bunch of flyaways because we melted her hair or anything like that. So it definitely helps to take your time and to use different strings of bleach and to do all these different treatments to make sure that the hair stays nice and healthy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's so pretty. Yeah. Wow, thank you so much. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And it feels really good still. Yeah. <laughs> thank you yeah. so much. Here's her before again. Definitely had a lot of work cut out for us. Quite a few inches of grow out and potentially compromised ends, which we ended up not having any damage. And here's her after in the natural sunlight. You can see that it's so much cooler and nice and icy. Not ashy, but just nice and bright. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and don't forget to like and subscribe.